Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how I transformed this image into a fine art portrait. So, let's begin. Okay, so now I open up my image and the first thing I normally do is duplicate my background layer. I do that by pressing Control J and sometimes I like to crop my image in the second step. Um, sometimes I just leave it towards the end. It depends on uh, my editing workflow for that particular image. But in this scenario, I want to crop it and I also want to change the size of my portrait. Um, so I normally choose 8x10 because that's the size I prefer for portraits when um, I print and enlarge and I prefer it. So, it, sorry, before I do that, um, I just wanted to show you that if I choose 8x10, um, and select the area that I'd like to keep. Uh, if we crop it here, you see that this is just too tight. There's not much space between the crown of the head and the edge, um, the top edge of the portrait. That's not good because when you want to print it, that could affect it. There's always um, what's called the bleed area and you just need to leave that space for printing and um, cropping the image and, and, and framing it as well. So you want to make sure that there's enough space. Uh, I don't like how this is so close to the elbow. I like to show a bit of her skirt. So I'm going to go down. Um, as you can see, if I leave it at this particular um, selection here, then we're going to lose the top of the head. So what I have to do in this particular scenario is stretch out my canvas which means it's going to go outside of the actual portrait so we're going to be um, left with empty sides to fill now that's not a problem because i will show you how we can fill out this space here so before i do that i just want to make sure that i'm happy with my selection or displayed okay Yep, that's good. That will click that or just press OK. All right, so now I will show you there are two different ways or actually probably many different ways, but the two um, methods that I normally use when I want to fill in um, my background layer um, when I'm extending it and enlarging it. I either use the content aware method or I just normally select as in press the selection tool here, the marquee. I drag it all the way down. Make sure it's not too close to the subject because you don't want to select that. Control J, which basically copies the area. Now I move it down and Control T. I stretch it and okay so you can see here you see this line what I normally do is just you know play around with it a bit move it down um, until the line is not that visible but I still do go over it and um, clean it up with either the clone tool or the patch tool so now that I've showed you this method I will remove this, probably delete it, get rid of it. And I will show you another method which is probably more accurate and quicker. And this is the content aware fill. Okay, so make sure you select the empty areas. And you just go a bit outside where the edge is. Make sure you don't get too close to the subject because you don't want to select this area and have it copied. I think that looks good. Now we go to edit, fill, content aware. 
Blending mode normal, opacity 100%. Click OK. And you just wait for it to um, process. There we go. Works like magic. I sometimes like to get a bit close and personal just to make sure that it's been patched nicely. Sometimes you can see a bit of um, lines and discrepancies, but it's not a big problem. You can always fix it up. And normally I use my clone or um, patch tool to fix that up, which is really um, with few uh, simple and quick steps. Okay, so let's do the other side. The same thing, drag right from the top to the edge and go down. Let me just reduce the size. Let's do it again. I'll probably will start from here because I don't want it to be too, I don't want it to be too close to the skirt because that will be a problem. It might copy it. So just go here and edit fill. Okay. Yeah, so you didn't do a very good job on this side, only because the subject is quite close to the edge. Um, normally what I would do in a situation like this, let's just um, control Z, control Z. That's to take it back to original form. In this situation, I'll just do my other method, which is um, selecting the rectangular marquee tool, go up here and drag it down. Let's see how close it is to the edge, um, to the skirt. Okay, I think I'll start it again because it's not right at the top. Redo this. Now what I do after I selected the area that I'd like to copy is Control J. So basically what that does is just copy that area um, and paste it into a new layer. Now click V, which is a shortcut to the move tool and just drag it. And I like to stretch it out a bit. So I press control T and I drag it not too much because then you'll be able to see the bending and that's what happens when you stretch an area okay let's press uh, press OK and yeah see you can see this is not a very clean job it's not like the content aware which um, patches it seamlessly and makes it look so clean and tidy for this one it just makes it um, it means that you have to just do a bit of extra work when you uh, clean it up so what I'll do is I will select this layer layer one uh, press on the shift key and select the background copy and then right click merge layers and make them into one layer and now I'll do the cleanup I'll select my patch tool and I normally alternate between those two tools, which is the clone stamp and the patch tool. Now I select around the area that I'd like to clean up, drag it down a bit and release. Now that we have stretched the background and uh, changed it to the size, desired size, what I will do is I will start editing the skin. So basically clean up all the blemishes and um, 
I'll create another layer to fix the strays and hair strands that are just sticking out. So what I'll do is I will name this uh, background or EKG. Um, and now control J to duplicate the layer. All right, so I'm going to start with the, the patch tool. Um, you can use spot healing brush or the healing brush. It's really entirely up to you and what works um, best for you as a photographer. Basically select around the area that you want to clean up and drag that somewhere close so that it would look good because you want to have the same tone on the area that you are selecting so that it looks good and not patchy. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Um, now it's time to create another layer for uh, to clean up the strands and the strays. So let's go ahead and do that. Also, Control J, just call it here. So in this step, I will be cleaning up all the flyaway hairs and strays that are on her clothes and some are on her face. So I'll do that by choosing the clone tool and I'll begin. I also want to move this um, stud earring over here. I just don't like it being too close to the other earring and I think it'll be just more, you know, a little bit more neater. I'll clean it up with the clone stamp. and reduce the opacity. So now that we're done cleaning up the hair area, we are going to move to the next step, which is probably the most important step in all of my editing. And this is called the frequency separation. And that's where we work on the skin and give it that flawless look. So the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate my layer. I'll create another duplicate. So making it two 
copies of the last copy that or the last layer that we worked on. We're going to go to the top layer and we're going to call that high frequency slash texture and the lower one, the bottom one, we will call that low frequency slash color. And I'm going to create a layer in between and I'm going to call that paint. And then I will select all three layers and control G to put them in a group. And I'm going to call that frequency separation. So now we go on the top layer, which is the high frequency. We hide it because we're not using it at the moment. We go to low frequency, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm just going to drag this all the way back. What we want to do in this particular step is make the skin as smooth as possible. So we're going to drag it up and we're going to see how that's going to look. What we want is for the details to still be visible, but for the skin to be really, really smooth. I normally do 5.5 .5 pixels. That's just my safe area. And I'm always happy with that. So I'm going to leave it at 5.5 .5 and I'm going to hit OK. So now we go to the high frequency layer. We reveal the layer again by clicking on the eye icon and we go to image apply image now in the layer section we have to choose low frequency uh, blending mode would be subtract opacity at 100 percent scale at 2 and offset at 128 click ok now we go to our blending mode menu and we choose linear light so once this step is completed we can now begin our cleanup i normally start with the low frequency i work on the color areas so i choose the lasso tool make sure the feathering is on 20 pixels and i start selecting the areas that i want to blur Make sure you don't get too close to the hairline because that would actually blur it out and you don't want to do that. You just want to make sure that you're on the skin area. Go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and let's drag this all the way down and slowly go up to see how much we want to blur it. Just make sure you don't go overboard because you'll notice that it will start to um, create this unrealistic look. And sometimes there's a bit of banding and lining around the edges. You don't want to do that. So don't go overboard with it. But the good thing about having this layer is that you can um, adjust the opacity. You can play around with that. If you're not too happy with the finished look and if you feel that it's overdone, then you can always um, bring your opacity down. Okay, I think... I usually don't go over 12 pixels. So let's just try 15. Hit OK and see how that's going to look. Yeah, that's, um, that's not too bad. Let's see without it, with... Do you see how that smooths the skin out and it makes it, it just gives it that really nice, clean, uh, flawless look that we photographers really like to have in our images. 
Okay, so I'm going to pick another area. And instead of having to keep going to all the steps by going to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, what you can do is, there's a shortcut which I love using, um, Control F. So you just click on that, and there we go. So I'm just going to go around all the areas I'd like to fix. That's probably too close to the hair, and I probably need to clean that strand and get rid of it. I sometimes go over the clothing as well and I blur it out. Um, it doesn't always look that good, it depends on, yeah, with this one because it's got a pattern, um, as you can see it blurs it out too much and I don't like that. So we're going to leave her skirt and top untouched. It works on some images and not all the images, it depends on the fabric and whether it's got a pattern or not. Okay, I also do the hair area. It's not something I always do. I use it only when I feel that there's a lot of um, hair sticking out and the hair is not looking as neat as I'd like it to be. So what, what that does is it just um, gives it that nice shiny and smooth look that you want in your portraits but you know it's a personal choice you don't have to do it um, you could skip that if you like but what I'm gonna do I feel like it's too strong so I'm going to go ahead um, again to the blur um, panel and just bring it down a bit so what I like to do usually is just go all the way down to the beginning and then go up the slider I'll go ahead with 10 yeah let's see the before yeah I just like how it smooths this area here uh, makes it look really nice and neat So now that we're done blurring out all the areas on the, um, the skin and the hair, we will go to the high frequency layer and we'll select the clone stamp tool. I normally have the opacity between 40 and 50%, so I will go 50 over here and just increase the flow to 100. Okay, get close and probably use a bigger brush make sure it's on current layer and start sampling the areas that you want to work on and go over let's just see yeah that's good make sure as you're working on your skin you're always sampling next to the area that you want to clone. Maybe make it bigger so that we can go a bit faster. Once I'm done um, working on the texture area, I go to the paint layer, I choose a paintbrush, I reduce the opacity to about 
15. And what I'm going to do in this step is basically blend in all the areas that aren't even. So if you, I don't know if you can see it here, but this area on the forehead, you can see there is some, it, it looks a bit patchy with some dark areas and brighter areas. So it doesn't really look that, um, that clean and smooth as I would like it to um, to look. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to paint in these areas and just make them blend in together and look nice and look. So I'm going to sample the color that I want to use, which is probably around here and increase the, my brush size. And I do that normally by uh, pressing on the bracket, the right bracket key on my keyboard that usually increases the size and the left bracket key is to decrease it. As I said previously, I love using shortcuts. I find it just, you know, it works quicker and so let me just turn it off and back on. The changes are very subtle and that's how I like it. I don't like it to look too drastic and too exaggerated. You do want to make it look as natural as possible. So just continue painting and as you do, make sure that you are sampling the areas that are closest to where you want to make the changes. So I'm happy with how this looks so far. I'll close that and I will create a curves layer because I would like to bring out the shadows and the highlights a bit in this image. I feel like it's um, just too bright in certain areas and dark in the shadow areas. Maybe bring the opacity down a bit. I think I'll stick to 50%. And here's the before and here's after the curves. That looks good. So now I would like to use the liquify tool. It's something that I always use when I'm editing my portraits. I absolutely love this tool. It allows me to, you know, play around with my image. Um, if I needed to bloat an area or I wanted to pucker it up, I could use the Lookify tool without losing quality um, of the image. Yeah, so basically you distort your image in certain parts, but you don't lose quality on it. So what I need to do, um, I need to use a flattened um, layer, uh, which is a basically a sum up of all the layers that we worked on earlier. And to do that, we need to press on Control, Shift, Alt, E. And this is our merged layer. Now we go to Filter, Liquify. I like to zoom it in a bit. And I use this tool a lot on the hair area. I will select the forward warp tool and gently press down. You don't want to go too hard. I always use uh, a, the brush pressure on 20. Don't go higher than that, otherwise it will be it will be too hard and you won't like it. We will rename this layer 
liquefy and this is the before after before and after I now want to bring out the shadows and highlights of the image and I will create a curves layer I'll invert it and I'll call that shadows I'll create another curves layer for the highlights and just bring it up a notch also invert it and call it highlights now what we'll need to do is select our brush tool and bring down the opacity to about 10% you can increase and decrease as you like let's get close and leave the flow at 100% for now and what I want to do is enhance the shadows make sure that the brush is on white so that it can actually create the effect and start brushing So now we move on to the highlights layer and we continue using the same brush at the same opacity on white and we get close to zoom in to where you want to start. I usually do the eyes. and just reduce the size of the brush Okay, so let's look at our image before we added the curves for the highlights and the shadows. So now I just want to add a bit of color to her lips. I feel like they're too pale. And I'll do that by adding a hue and saturation layer, adjustment layer. click on control I for inverse so basically what that does is only applies the adjustment to the area that you will paint over so I'm going to reduce my opacity at 20 and make sure that you put it on white and just paint up the lips now zoom out just to see how that looks okay yep I like that maybe just reduce the opacity a little bit and yep also I noticed there is a dark area here maybe it's some dry lips so I'll fix that by adding a levels there um, adjustment layer I mean you can either do that or just delete this one what you can do is just select the area that you want to work on which is just around here 
Okay, my feather is too high. Let's do five pixels. And now go to the adjustment layer and select levels. Just bring that up a bit. The shadows, just leave it where it is. The highlights up a little and just tighten it a little bit so it would look natural. And let's have a look. That's probably too much. We can always reduce the opacity. You know what, let's just leave it at 70% and what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint over the lip line because I don't want that to be overexposed. So I'm going to choose a small brush. I'm going to leave it on the white so that I can take that off. It basically removes whatever has just been added. I'm just going to reduce opacity again because I don't like the fact that it's lost all of the shadowing. It just doesn't look natural without a bit of shadow on that area. Just leave it at 30. Yeah, I think that looks okay. And then just paint over it again to bring out the shadows around the inside of the lip. I now want to work on her eye color. I want to make it pop out a little and uh, make it more vibrant. So I'm going to go to Hue Saturation. Now I'm going to work on the whole image and just um, enhance the shadows and highlights um, by creating a merged copy of my image. And I do that by pressing Control Shift Alt E. I go to Image Adjustments, go all the way down to Shadows Highlights. And I'll just adjust it accordingly. And press OK. And I will call that SNH for shadows and highlights. So I am now pretty much finished with um, all the changes that I needed to make and edits um, and other adjustments. What I'm going to do now is add my textures. This is the part where the image will start looking more like a fine art image. Um, I will add a few of my favorite textures that I normally use. Now that we have opened up all of our textures, what we'll do is we will select all four, right click or just control G to put them in a, to place them in a group and just call that textures. And what I normally do is I add a layer mask and I grab all these textures again and I lower the opacity for all of them just so that I can see the subject so that I can paint over it. And later on we can just adjust each texture as we like. Okay, so grab your brush. Make sure it's on black and you do want it to be on 100% opacity because you don't want any texture left on her skin and you can start painting. Just increase the size of the brush and start brushing over the skin and the hair area. I sometimes like to leave a bit of the texture on her clothes just because of the effect that it gives. I'm going to reduce the size and the flow. I'm 
just going to paint some of it back in. I don't like how sometimes it can create a halo around the subject and then just gently and softly take it out. Sometimes you have to zoom in just to be able to see it better. I'll now reduce the opacity of all the layers, all the combined layers. I'll just go down to, yeah, maybe just about here, 79. And then what I'll do is I'll go into each texture layer and um, adjust its opacity based on how I like it. And I can also change its blending mode. So for some of them, I might go for overlay. So let's have a look at our image without the textures and with. So it just gives it that really nice artistic type of look. Also painterly, it looks like it's a painting. What I want to do now is create a vignette effect. And I'll do that by adding a gradient fill adjustment layer. So there's the gradient fill. And we want it to be radial and we have to reverse it so that it would be on the edges. And just increase the size and what you can do with this you can actually move it inside of your image so you can play around with that and see what you like and then grab your brush on black 75 opacity make that a large brush and just tap 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 where you don't want it to appear I just want it for the edges of the image, so I'm just going to remove it from my subject. And I'm just going to reduce the opacity and see how far I want it to go or how heavy I want it to look. Okay, let's try overlay. Yeah, I like that. I now want to change the overall tones of my image. I feel like it's too warm. So I want to change that. I'm going to choose an adjustment layer. So what I'll do is I will add a color balance adjustment layer. Uh, work on the midtones before. Wow, that's a big difference. All right, what I'm going to do is also reduce the opacity. And I might just go back to the gradient fill and just make it pop more. I feel like the effect is not that visible. I mean, you can play around with this and adjust it as you like. Um, there's no, there are no rules as to what is right and what is wrong when it comes to choosing the effects that you prefer for your image. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, adjust it until I'm happy with my image. And then we can move on to some of the last steps for this tutorial. I also want to make my image a bit darker. So I'm going to add the levels adjustment layer. And the reason for doing this is because my image just felt like it was a bit too bright and I wanted to add a bit of more a dramatic feel to it. So I'm happy with how this looks. So I have now finished editing my image and I've created a merged layer of all the layers. And this is where I will be sharpening my image. So I'm going to go to filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. I'll zoom out. and call this Smart Sharpen. So here we go. This is the final image. And this is what it looked like originally before all the edits.
I think I'll do one more thing just before we finish up. I'm not very happy with how this is popping out. So I'm just going to go to liquefy and I'm slightly going to push that in. I just feel like it's too bloated. There we go. So that's our final image. I really hope you guys have enjoyed watching this tutorial. If you did like it, please don't forget to click on the like button and subscribe. I will be posting a new video very soon. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.